North Korea may send members of its armed forces to Ukraine to support the Russian army, South Korean Defense Minister Kim Jong-hyun said. Yonhap reports. Since Russia and North Korea have signed a mutual treaty similar to a military alliance, the possibility of such a deployment is very likely, he noted during parliamentary hearings. Kim added that recent news about the elimination of North Korean soldiers in the occupied territory of Ukraine is most likely true. Yonhap added that the statement by the South Korean defense minister came at a time when the North Korea intends to strengthen ties with Russia, as evidenced by a bilateral agreement that includes a clause on mutual defense. It is known that the agreement was signed by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, and Russian leader Vladimir Putin during negotiations that took place in June of this year. The strength of ties between North Korea and Russia was reflected in a birthday message that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un sent to President Vladimir Putin on his 72nd birthday. Sending his congratulations, Kim called Putin my closest comrade, saying that relations between their countries had developed into invincible alliance relations and eternal strategic relations following Putin's visit to Pyongyang in June. Meetings and camaraderie ties between us to be continued in the future will make a positive contribution to further consolidating the eternal foundation of the DPRK, Russia friendship and strategic and cooperative relations, Kim said, cited by the North's state-run Korean Central News Agency or KCNA. Kim's friendly message to Putin came a day after Kim and Chinese President Xi Jinping exchanged messages to mark the 75th anniversary of their country's relations, which were less effusive and shorter than in the past, hinting at cooler ties. As reported, the Ukrainian armed forces killed six North Korean officers in Donbass and three more North Korean servicemen were wounded. According to Kyiv Post, before this attack, Russian occupiers allegedly showed their North Korean colleagues how their military was preparing for assault operations. At the same time, the chairman of the Council of Reservists of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Taimochko, stated that the appearance of the North Korea military could be a potential threat, not only for Ukraine, but also for other states. North Korea is a madly militarized country in which the entire population is pumped through the army one way or another and the loss of a few people there is not so important. However, what is important is that those North Korea military, if they received any information or skills because they do not just end up in Russia, have passed a certain selection. Now they are destroyed and will not be carriers of certain information, he explained. Explosively intensifying Hurricane Milton is the latest freaky system to come out of what veteran hurricane scientists call the weirdest storm season of their lives. Before this Atlantic hurricane season started, forecasters said everything lined up to be a monster busy year, and it began that way when Beryl was the earliest storm to reach Category 5 on record. Then, nothing. From August 20th, the traditional start of peak hurricane season, to September 23rd it was record quiet, said Colorado State University hurricane researcher Phil Klotzbach. Then five hurricanes popped up between September 26th and October 6th, more than double the old record of two. On Sunday and Monday, there were three hurricanes in October at the same time, something that never happened before, Klotzbach said. In just 46.5 hours, Hurricane Milton went from just forming as a tropical storm with 40 mph winds to a top-of-the-charts Category 5 hurricane with 160 mph winds and then it got even stronger. Before hurricane season started June 1, forecasters such as Klotzbach and the federal government looked at the record hot oceans and an embryonic La Nina cooling of parts of the Pacific that brings winds and other conditions that foster hurricane formations. They made bold predictions of an extremely busy season. It was nearly unanimous. When Beryl became a Category 5 hurricane in early July, they were looking prescient. Then came mid-August. August 20th is such a milestone marking the beginning of peak hurricane season, which runs to mid-October, that hurricane season forecasting pioneer Bill Gray used to ring a bell as sort of a starter's pistol. This year when a student rang the bell, the storm activity seemed to ground nearly to a halt. When computing a combination of storm strength and duration, the next month was the lowest on record, 
Klotzbach said. That was strange because the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean and parts of the Atlantic were at record or near record high temperatures, acting as giant gas stations for hurricanes. But the air was also warming to an unusual degree and more than sea surface temperature. Add to that a natural weather phenomenon pushed air from high up to sink down low over the Atlantic, which made it tougher for hurricanes to form, said University of Albany atmospheric scientist Kristen Corbusiero. The upper air got cooler, the sinking air moved away, and in the Gulf of Mexico the Central American gyre, a whirling overarching weather system, took over. That started the spin that kept kicking out hurricanes, Corbusiero said. Hurricane Helene formed, followed by Isaac, Kirk, Leslie and now a monstrous Milton. Helene rapidly intensified in those warm waters, but when Milton came along it gained strength at a much higher clip, quadrupling in wind speed in less than two days. Milton became the seventh storm in the last 20 years to gain at least 75 miles per hour in wind speed in just 24 hours and none did so between 1950 and 2000, Klotzbach said. Corbusiero, Klotzbach and other experts said random chance, other weather conditions, perhaps the 2022 undersea volcano eruption that shot lots of water vapor into the atmosphere all could have also played a role in the weird hurricane season.